everyone. Welcome to Dear Hallmark. My name is Dara and we are about to talk about some Hallmark movie and mystery stuff. And I called in for reinforcements for this one. Um, he really needs no introduction. All I'll say is his name is Bran, the man with the master plan in his right hand. Sir Bran from Deck the Hallmark, how are you doing? I'm so good. And that was a very, I, I liked, I want you to introduce me every time I walk into the room. <laughs> it, that's great. It sounds really nice. Yes. Thank you for coming into the home of dear Hallmark. Um, oh, are you kidding me? What an honor. What an honor. So let's start off with this question. What's yeah. a song or an artist or an album that you just have in heavy rotation right now? Well, because of my kids, uh, in, in Canto and Con what in Canto. Yeah, oh yeah. I still haven't seen it. <laughs> I, I've only seen, I haven't seen it all the way through, but I've seen, you know, the songs. Yeah. Um, uh, God. Olivia Rodrigo. Okay. <laughs> okay. Because, because at heart, <laughs> at heart, I'm a 16 year old girl, uh, who just got her driver's license. Understood. And I just want everyone to know that. And I want to drive and rub it in everybody's faces that I got it and call it, call the people that broke my heart scum. So understood. Shout out to Olivia. Shout out to the Oster. Um, <laughs> I've been listening to this band called Moonchild. They're like a neo soul band. Moon. What is it? Moonchild? Moonchild. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're, they're really, they're, they're a fun time. And uh, I just had them. They're two albums, Little Ghost and Starfruit. I've had those albums on repeat. They're really cool. Okay, all right. I'm adding it. I'm adding it. Oh, shoot. So let's, um, let's electric slide into this other topic because there's this event coming up. It is June. And yeah. this event will be coming up towards the end of June. And it's called Roma Drama. And you and your other compatriots are going to be in the building live and in charge. How are you feeling? I feel great about it. I'm, I'm excited. I'm from Florida um, originally. Bad. And um, I try not to go back there. I actively avoid it. Uh, it's hot. It's, you know, hot. And <laughs> I just try not to. Um, but you know what? It's going to be great. Good to be home. Yeah. Uh, and I'm excited to see everybody excited to hang out with some friends. I haven't seen in a while. Yeah. And, uh, it's going to be great. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to try not to go outdoors and <laughs> avoid the sun as much as possible. And the humidity. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm, 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 I'm very much looking forward to it. I'm excited. You're, you're going to be there. I am. I'm, I'm really excited. About I'm it. really you excited. How, you see how I said that with a like little tiny, uh, question mark at the end. I didn't yeah. want to like, it was a miniature book. <laughs> You're coming? Right? Right? <laughs> it's going to be great. Very excited. I'm excited. About it. Have you been to West Palm Beach before? Even though you're from Florida, have you been there before? I uh, I mean, I've been to Miami. I've been to Fort mm -hmm. Lauderdale. I've been close enough. I mean, it's yeah. all the same. It's all Those the same. are their brother and sister at that point. Yeah. It's all the same, man. Yeah. It's all the same. <laughs> now, this the next question is a selfish question. Um, Will Duck the Hallmark be reviewing Chesapeake Shores anytime soon? Mm. It's a good question. I mean, we are we're we're still journeying through um, Wind Calls the Heart. We just finished um, season six, so we're still a few seasons behind. Oh. Um, so once we finish that, which if my math is correct, I think will be done before the next season starts. I think. And so um, I, we'll have to figure something out. And uh, it's been thrown around. Chesapeake's been thrown around. I've never seen it. Mm. Um, so I, I, you know, I, my Hallmark origin story is I would watch the Christmas movies all holiday season long. And then that was it. Like I didn't watch the non-Christmas movies and I didn't watch the show. So this, it's all new, newer yeah. to me. Um so when calls the heart, I had never seen before we started reviewing it and signs he'll deliver. Never saw that before we started reviewing it. And so all these things that have been around for a while on the yeah. Hallmark space that aren't Christmas related. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm down to, I'm down to clown. So I'm down to watch it. Yeah. 
I haven't seen, I still haven't seen Sound Still Delivered yet either. I'm planning to start that. I, I, I know, I know, I, I, I hear I hear you through your facial expression. <laughs> it, it's real good. It's, you know, I, I struggle with things like Signed Sealed that are like actually like really good. <laughs> like it's like, <laughs> oh my so here's what, here's what I mean. Like Hallmark Christmas movies to me, like they're this nice warm blanket that I can just get under and like turn my mind off and just enjoy. Yeah. And that was my, that was it for me. Like it was just a nice safe space to be to at the end of the day, no stress. I can fold clothes if I want to. It's nice. It's chill. But then like once you like, there's something very comforting about the quality level that Hallmark has been in the past because it's like, it's good. It's not gonna, uh, it's not gonna hurt my feelings, but like, there's a step. Obviously, there's a step. When I go to the movie theater, I'm yeah. expecting something else, you know? Sure. And so when I turn on Hallmark Channel, I'm expecting a certain type of thing, uh, both from a, you know, format and a quality and, you know, other things. Yeah. And Sign Sealed is definitely like a step above your standard Hallmark movie when it comes to uh, story and quality and lots of times like th like some of the best acting i've ever seen on the network mm -hmm. is in the show and movies so but it's like ah yeah it's really really good it's really good <laughs> but it's like at the same you know what i'm saying like there's almost like, tear, there's tears for me so like yeah there are things like a hallmark christmas movie i could watch on a loop all day long yeah i know there's better stuff qualitatively out there but sure. this is my safe space Science still delivered clearly better qualitatively, but I would pick a bad quality Hallmark Christmas movie f from 2015 over Science still delivered most days, even though the quality is better. I don't know if that makes sense. It does. You're about the feels. Like you want, you I'm want the feels. Feel. And there's definitely feels in Science still delivered. It's it's very very good. It's just like it's different. I don't think of it as Hallmark. Mm. I think of it as kind of its own thing. So I think that's what I'm getting at word word so what's how, your how did you get into to hallmark i don't know your oh your origin story sure so like you i grew up uh watching the hallmark christmas movies a lot mom always had them on mm -hmm. um but i i didn't really get into the non christmas ones until i started working like after college just as a reprieve from corporate politics I was like, I just needed something just that I can just woosa with. So um, I would watch them like one off, never really paid attention to who the actors actually were, you know. Um, but then in 2020, um, that was the first time where I could actually watch the Christmas movies when they aired. And right. so that's that's how I got into the like, I was like, well, who's talking about them? And then that's how I kind of got into the whole hallmark podcasting youtube mm -hmm. thing because i didn't i didn't know that y'all were out here killing it like that so you did this was the pat this past year it was your first holiday season watching all of them well 2020 was my first um but I, that was exclusively on youtube i didn't okay. start the podcast until august of last year was it harder than you thought it would be to yes. actually watch all of them and talk about them Yes, this year was hard because I was super ambitious and tried to add Lifetime to the mix. And I, I wasn't aware that Lifetime was going to try to one up Hallmark and give like 35 as well and do yeah. the whole 30 day half 30 September day thing. thing. And I was like, yeah. I can't, I can't keep up. And I fell down the stairs. Uh, so like, I did not keep up with it at all, at all, at all. Yeah. But no, listen, that's what's okay. It's like it's like reading the Bible, right? You miss a few days and you pick it right back up. You know what you, I mean? You better you better come into the room. You, you better you get, preach. You get you get back up. You get back you, up. Uh, but here's the thing: Lifetime, yeah, Lifetime tried to do us dirty like that last year. <laughs> it was not cool. I'd be shocked if they do that again because I I can't imagine it was a success for them. It wasn't. Just looking, just looking at ratings, I know that's not everything for everybody, but I don't know. It wasn't, and I'm even, I'm still going through the Lifetime movies now, and I'm like, <laughs> y'all did all this hype for this, but that's another thing. Like, I don't even, uh, I don't even think they were, 
whatever. It, I just don't. I just it don't. It was a weird year for them, too, because they had a lot of acquisitions. Yes. Um, like a lot, like a handful of them had already aired in like other countries. Which yes. Which is never a good thing. So, yes. yeah. We just picked a handful of them. And that's, I think, all that we can do at this point. Just too yeah. much. Too much. We were trying to spread the love out, you know? And you, right. were, doing, you were doing some GAC as well. Oh, yeah. I kept up with all but one or two of them. Um, cause they did 12 last year. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So that, that was fun times. How was, I only watched one. I didn't want, I, I only watched the uh, one in January with Danica and Neil. How was it? How were they qualitatively? Oh, I was surprised. They were really good. My favorite, the one wasn't even a Christmas one. It was a, uh, an autumn romance with Chad, Michael Murray and Jessica Lowndes. Uh -huh. My God, I, that's, that's my it was always you if i had oh. to pick like that <laughs> I those can... two alts so you just put them on the screen it doesn't really matter what they say right you're just like this is a lot of good looks <laughs> um, are they is there are they saying things are they are they talking hey. and that was their third no their christmas movie that they because they also did a christmas movie for jc tv too and that was their third movie together because they did a lifetime christmas movie which was really really good uh -huh. called too close for christmas uh -huh. um i recommend that for sure yeah, but yeah, yeah. i was just like up oh, I, I need more where this came from please and thank you yeah, yeah. it'll be interesting to see what gac does this year because they haven't really done anything this year aside from i think two in january or whatever so yeah. they have all these deals like and all those people that they have deals with they have to make movies and those that movies part. Cost, those movies cost money that part and I don't know if they're making it. So, you know, it'll be interesting. Can I ask you a question? I know we're just, you know, <laughs> can I ask you a question? Yes. Who is on your um, Mount Rushmore of Hallmark? Or you, you can even do like Hallmark now that so many have left and done other things like Hallmark Lifetime GAC. Who's on your own Mount Rushmore? Can I split it up between men and women? Cause I yeah. have, I just, okay. So for, let's start with the men. It is cousin Andrew. Um, Tyler Hines, Christopher Palaha, Paul Campbell, and Benjamin Ayers. Those are my my top. Love it. I love all those guys. Yeah, they're just so talented, and they make it look easy to the point where I almost get the the the, the thought like, yo, I could do this. It's like, <laughs> no, you can't. It's because they make it look easy because they they're incredibly talented. Have you talked to the Mount Rushmore of guys? all but one who's the one christopher palaha that rat bastard <laughs> uh, well he's a great guy he's i i yeah he's a great guy yeah he was, a, he was a, ironically he was our very first guest ever i i remember you said that and i think that that's so cool and you guys still have maintained that that relationship um, he's a great dude he's a great yeah guy. Yeah. Now let's let's hop skip to the ladies. Hop skip. Uh, Bethany Joy Lenz. Oh yeah. Jill Wagner. Yeah. Mallory Jansen. Even though she's only been in two, she she kills it for me. She emotes. You can see it in her eyes. Like she acts with her whole being. I feel what like is she she in. But aside from um, the one with Heinz. Uh, her pen pal. Oh yeah. That French um yeah. wondrousness. Uh, oh, we, yeah. That that was that was good. Um, Bethany, Jill, Mallory, Brooke Dorsey, and I know I'm missing. Oh, uh, Nikki Deloach. I was gonna condemn you if you didn't add. <laughs> Not I, condemn though. <laughs> oh, no, I, I would have. I would have. Uh, have you talked? Have you talked to them? No. None. None. Mm none but i have been grateful to speak with the women that i have spoken with so far they are wonderful women um i've had a chance to talk to cindy busby and Brittany bristow which both really cool. both just salt of the earth salt like sea salt mm -hmm. wonderful sea salt. Yes, yes indeed thank you for sharing that with me thank you for asking i felt like this was flipped interview for two seconds well, no, that's good that's good <laughs> It's good. I don't like being interviewed, so I just, uh, this is what I do. <laughs> so, well, one more question, yeah. or maybe not, but what is your relationship like with Hallmark Movies and Mysteries, as we're about to talk about a Hallmark Movie and Mystery movie? 
Yes. Um, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, um, so ironically, back in the day, before starting the podcast, the movie, the mystery Christmas movies were like more my jam. For some reason, I gravitated towards them more and I liked them more. I feel like it's really, fun. yeah, I was moody, maybe. Maybe I was moody. A bit emo. Uh, oh my yeah, a little, word! A little emo brand, but uh, <laughs> now I think it's flipped. Um, but I the mystery as as far as like the mystery series go, mm-hmm. I didn't get into it until starting the podcast, obviously. Mm-hmm. And we wouldn't. We haven't done a ton of them. I feel like we've watched one crossword. We've watched one Aurora. We've watched one of whatever the J- Jesse whatever thing is up in the Martha's up, Vineyard. Martha's Vineyard. That was something. <laughs> Seen all the mystery one oh ones because Oh boy, okay. I was uh, gonna condemn Baja. you if you <laughs> No, you got it. It's the best <laughs> it's the best that they have to offer. Um watched um Redemption at Cherry whatever the heck oh, uh, I'm last sorry. week. Uh real turd and I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah so by and large I think they're all just you know Mo- for the most part, all are fine, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, that, but but mystery one hundred and one, like the combination of Palaha and Jill, is just like Chef's kiss. This is what everybody should be aiming for. Not like the acting's fantastic, the the story's fantastic, script great. Um, so I think that's like the goal of all of them, and none of them quite get there. I know there's a lot of uh, tea garden heads out there. But it's all all of it's just fine to me, unless it's mystery one oh one. And then that's that's the goal. That's the goal. Well, speaking of Chef's Kiss, there is a mystery series you should check out called Gourmet Detective. Gourmet. It, star, yeah, it stars heard, Dylan Neal. People people tell us about this all the time. That and Mystery One O One is my those are my top two favorites. And I like Gourmet Detective because the woman is the detective in that one. Yes. And the guy is the he's a chef and he's he gives me Frasier vibes and Frasier is like my one of my favorite TV shows. So I yeah, that's always a thing that we like yeah. talk about is the fact that it's always the guy being the detective and the, the woman's just kind of like, I guess I will just fall just try to figure this out myself. <laughs> Even it's like, well, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe let's flip this sucker. So it's good to know that there's one out there that, that does that. Yes. Now, how do you feel about movies and mysteries or HMM, just to save my jaw from doing all this work? Um, HMM, how do you feel about the turn to doing more dramatic movies outside of Christmas? I, yeah, I think it's interesting. I, you know, I, I'm not, I don't run a TV network. And so I, I don't want to claim that <laughs> really? I know what's, ba- uh, yeah, I know. Ramble Jam? I know. What? Uh, it might as well be, but, what? uh, yeah, I think I, there's like, I wish there was a way to do both and do it really well. I just don't know mm-hmm. what the answer to that, that is. Mm-hmm. Like, so the um, uh, curious caterer, Nikki yeah. and Andrew. Yeah. Like, I hope we get another one of those. I just don't. We I better. Just don't, I just don't know. Yeah. I don't know what their plans are. Um, the non-Christmas dramatic ones, by and large, so far that I've seen, it's tough because, like, um, what are the ones that I've seen? this year um what was the one earlier in the year that everybody loved and it was like it was an avalanche something oh north other. to home yeah good it's good i just don't want it like it's just yeah it's just it's sad and it's just like everyone's just sad the whole time and i'm just sad it's like clearly good like it's good yeah but i just don't want it you know what i mean i want that i just want i want a good hallmark uh, Christmas movie is what I want. Like I want, <laughs> that's all that I really want. And so <laughs> everything that's not that I'm just like, eh, I don't know. So, so far I've just kind of been sad while I watch them. Like Benedict Ooh. stone last year. Yeah. Good, good, good. Sad. Yeah. Maybe sad. So I don't want sad when I turn on, um, Hallmark by and large. I mean, there's some, there's some obviously, um, sad Christmas movies that they've done over the past couple yeah. years or sadder, but that, that still work yeah. um, for me. Maybe it's because of the Christmas and I'm blinded by the light. Um, but when there's no Christmas to save it, I'm just sad and I don't want it. So um, I want them to figure it out um, or I just want them to change the channel and make it a Christmas <laughs> network. <laughs> what are we doing here? 
I hear Hallmark that. drama? Hallmark drama? Are you kidding me with that? Are you kidding me with that? Does network? anyone actually watch that network? Is what I wonder. <laughs> no. I, like, no one I does. Who I can this? only watch so much you know, Little House or whatever they have going on 24-7. I yeah. can't do it. <laughs> can't do it. Make it a Christmas network. Let's do this thing. I don't know who, like, I don't know if petitions actually work, but let's do it. Speaking of which, you know that we have three new Christmas movies coming out for uh, Christmas in July this year. I've I'd- seen I've seen the scuttlebutt. I've seen the preview. I we only have like one title so far. Is that correct? I d- I don't even know that. I barely even knew who was in it because <laughs> they had to tell me they were like Tori Corbin's in this with Tori Devito's. I didn't even recognize it because it went so fast. It was going so fast. Yeah. I well, we have one that's announced with. Kevin McGeary. Oh and yeah, his girl. and his. And yeah. then there's Corbin Blue and someone, and then Tori. some other. Tori. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and then another, uh, just a mystery uh, that we don't know anything about. So. Yeah. But I'm very excited about it. Give me Christmas, and uh, they're starting on, uh, according to the commercial Hallmark Channel on July 1st, which is no earlier than normal. Uh, they typically have done like Hallmark movies and mysteries for two weeks. Mm-hmm. And then channel for two weeks, and I feel like maybe we're getting a longer Christmas in July, which I'm here for. Of course, of course. So speaking of Tory, let's let's get into this ripping time, ripping, um, ripping time, uh, which is Hallmark and mo- Hallmark and movies, Hallmark movies and mysteries. Their latest, their latest installment of movie. Um, if you haven't seen, and by you I mean the, the viewers, the listeners out there, if you haven't seen Ripping Time. Allow me to give you just a snapshot about what it's about. Um, Tori DeVito's character, Sarah, and Niall Mater's character, Rip Van Winkle Jr. As uh, you, know. you know? Um this is just Rip Van Winkle Jr., no biggie. RVW the second. <laughs> so she's out there modding her business, farming with her son and her dad, and then her son bumps into Niall Mater's character, RVW. And she, he thinks he's a homeless man. And um, so, you know, her, this dude who's like trying to talk to Tori or, you know, has some feelings for her, is trying, is checking her out, trying to pursue her. Mm-hmm. His name is Jeremy, I think. Jeremy the cop, he comes and he's like, who's this dude? I don't want nothing, like, we gotta find out who he is. And so for, out throughout the course of the movie, RVW, he, Semi assimilates to modern times in terms of his clothing, his facial hair, and he works on their farm, all while trying to figure out where he came from, why he's here, who he is. So let's get into some scenes from the movie. Well, firstly, before we get into that, what were you thinking about when you heard that this was even going to be a movie? Like, what were your expectations going in? I was skeptical. Yeah. Um, for a couple reasons. One, I love time travel. Yeah. And I feel like Hallmark has tried their hand at time travel a handful of times. And it's, they're always fine, but I feel like they never quite stick the landing. So, like, Next Stop Christmas, for example, mm. last holiday season, really solid until the end. And then it's just like, what yeah. happened here? Yeah. And so I feel like um a uh, timeless christmas a, a couple holiday seasons ago where it's like really fun for a little bit and then it just seems like he's just there like he um, uh, really immediately is just like oh yeah this is life now um i and so i was like i don't know and then like the other hurdle was uh my guy niall playing rip van winkle like niall love niall think he's great but niall's kind of niall you know what i mean like i didn't know what we were gonna get out of a Niall made a Rip Van Winkle. So I was skeptical going into it. Same, same, same thing. I <clears throat> I was curious, excuse me, and it sounded incredibly odd, but also quirky. Like mm-hmm. it gave me Love Strikes Twice vibes because I felt like that movie was incredibly quirky with its mm-hmm. time travel element. And so I was expecting more quirk where the mystery element will come in with the time travel. But yeah, so that's I. I was just like, they, they, this could really either be a, a home run or we just go home. And um, let's let's get into actually what we thought about it. Yeah. So, Bran. Yeah. Kick us off. What What are your overall thoughts about Ripping Time? 
just pleasantly surprised by the whole thing. I so one, I thought they did a really good job with the time travel. We get a full explanation scene with a mm. with a physicist. You don't get that. And three yeah. chalkboards or That's three right. boards. You, because because you can, you can't put time travel on one board. Are you kidding me? You need three boards for that, which I think is uh, obviously accurate. No more. <laughs> you don't need any more than three boards. <laughs> Three boards, you can just get this whole thing figured out. Listen, you got um, one for the Father, one for the Son, one for the Holy Ghost. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> that's exactly that's all right. I'm saying. If it works for God, um, so uh, yeah, really, like, just happy. I, I, and I like that they kind of kept the him being surprised by modern things that bit going the whole yeah. uh, movie because I, I think it always works. It makes me laugh. I love it. And then Niall, I thought, crushed it. I thought yeah. Niall was so good in yeah. this movie. And um, I, 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 I really like. I kept, couldn't believe it. I kept waiting for the shoe, to, like the other. What is it? Foot. The she, other shoe. To something drop. about shoes and feet <laughs> dropping. I thought it was gonna happen, but it never did. It just like it was. He was just solid the whole movie. I was very pleasantly surprised by it. Uh, fantastic. Yeah, we're totally kin on this one because I, I feel the same way. It. I watched it twice, and okay. I was. I at first I was like. The first after the first watch, I said, "What has happened to me? What are these feelings? Do I actually like it?" Because my skepticism was so forward, and it almost blocked me from enjoying the movie. And I watched it again. I was like, "No, this is this is cute. Like I liked it. I like that it wasn't as dramatic as the Hallmark movies and mysteries that we've been getting. Because right before this, I watched Heart of the Matter, which is like." My goodness, that joint is intense. Is that the, um, um, who's that? Amy Teagarden. Yeah, I haven't seen that one. I, it looked like I was going to be sad. And so I didn't, it's, didn't it's it. a box full of sad. And I love her. I yeah. love her. I'm so happy that they signed her to a deal because I, I want more of her on the network. Yeah. And I was just sad that that was the first thing that she got thrown into was just the, the bucket of sad. I say she's going to be like, um, uh, our new Nikki Deloach, where she's going to be in all of the dramatic, like intense um, yeah, Hallmark be. movies and mysteries. But I want to see her in something light and fluffy. Like, I want to see her, because I don't think I've ever seen her do like a light, fluffy Hallmark Channel rom com. At least nothing that I can remember. Um, New Year's Resolution is pretty light and fluffy. Did you see that one with Michael Ray? I did. I did. I did. Yeah, it's not sad. I mean, like I, um, the DNA movie last holiday season, like isn't like it's just bonkers. Like it's yeah. just wild, you know. Yeah. So it's that's not your standard. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. But I was pleasantly surprised with this movie, and I, like you said, Niall killed it. Tori wow. was incredibly charming, and it made me, it, it almost made me forget that she was in North to Home. Because of, like, she just, I don't know if it was because that was more ensemble and this was focused She was on in North her. the Home, too? Exactly! Yes, yeah, she played the little, the younger, the youngest sister, Posey. Wow. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, the one who wanted to walk or backpack or climb all the, the global mountains. Classic Posey. <laughs> um, so let, let, let's chop this movie up. Um and marinate on it for a bit let's put some a1 steak sauce on it and okay. start off with your thoughts when we first see rip so he's in the barn and henry's freaking out and then rip and sarah she has the gun and there's that whole exchange how are you what are your thoughts well i'm immediately uh enjoying what Niall's doing. Niall's doing a thing with his fingers. He's yeah. kind of like, like this. <laughs> like he's always like about to break into a, like a jazz thing, which I really like. I love talking about pants. So the more we can talk about pants, I think is good, good yeah. for, for everybody. Uh, I was immediately like, oh, this is like, at first I was like, he's going to do, is he going to keep this up the whole movie? Uh, no way he is. And then he did. And then he mm -hmm. did keep it up. Mm -hmm. I mean, he mm -hmm. chilled it a little bit with the fingers, but <laughs> I forgot he kept it up the whole movie. I was immediately pretty locked in. 
Uh, my favorite part in that moment was him calling her a witch, and she was just like, "Keep it up," and yeah. you Call know, me a witch one more time. <laughs> Call me a witch one more time, which is something like this movie had some forward language, if you will, for Hallmark, like the witch calling, and then after that, when Rip asked, "Is this heaven?" and he said, and she said, "If this was heaven, my dad wouldn't be here," and I'm like, oh. <laughs> "We yeah, never." That- like that that was really funny um and then we get like uh the dad calls the police officer the bum i call him a bum i know he has a job i know no. he's listen i he's listen we bum. can we can all you know argue all we want about um police and defunding them or whatever we can defund this guy he listen D, what's his name? What's his Jeremy, name? Jeremy, I think. Defund Jeremy. <laughs> we can all agree on that. He's supposed to be out here protecting us, and no, he's get asking out of here. for dates. Like, get out go of here. somewhere. That's he needs right. to go straight to jail and do not collect $200. No doubt. Um, so he comes in, and I love, this is our first instance where we see Rip kind of captivated by modernity. Like, he mm. sees the sirens. He sees the police officer in this different getup because he asked if. Can I just pause you? You said modernity, and <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> I didn't see it coming. It took me a second to be like, "What? Who? Who is this? Who is modernity? Is that her name?" I figured it out though. I figured it out. But you gotta be care- You can't. Gotta be careful with those words uh, when you're just talking modernity. <laughs> I didn't know what else to say. I felt like that was a word that was <laughs> no, you apropos. did a great. You did a great. You did a great. It was perfect. It's the it's the word you should have used. I just didn't expect it. Didn't expect it. I'm just. It took me a little bit. <laughs> so he's getting acclimated to the 21st century. <laughs> sure. if you want to say it that way? That's fine. Whatever. And much like what you mentioned um, in your overall thoughts, just we see him bugged out by the sirens, uh, the police car. And he, he he mentioned the word constabulary, which I only know from the four episodes of When Calls the Heart that I've watched, that that is supposed to be akin to constable, which meant something like police officer. So I was like, okay, When Calls the Heart comes in, for, you know, at some point. You did a great job figuring that out. I. Uh... <laughs> This is, like, this is a real modernity situation for me. I'm just like, ah, whatever. That's, that's some old school language. I'm sure it means. Something. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. So we, we progress and they clean rip up and that whole moment where, <laughs> wait, did this happen before or after? No, I think this is before they clean him up and his, he takes his shirt off and then uh, <laughs> Sarah walks up and was like, I wanted to see about your chest. I mean, (laughs) (laughs) I was like, okay. And this is coming after the heels of, I watched a bunch of up TV movies and they all. (laughs) Someone's got to do your fight in a good fight. I got to get through this brand. Are you kidding? Sorry. Did you did you see they had some lemon movie? Do you know about this? Yes, Love so, Under the Lemon Tree. I heard about this thing that they did and I had to go see it for myself and I can confirm this is what happened. The first commercial break, they do it. Did you see this? First commercial break, they do a split screen and the commercials are on one side and then it stays on the actor. She's un she's unpacking a suitcase during the whole commercial break. Did you see this or did you just fast forward the commercial? I don't know because I'm not even finished the movie. Did okay. I even... So in the first, when they're about to go to the first commercial break, she walks into a room with a suitcase. Yeah. She does like a heavy sigh and it fades, but the commercial comes up on one side and it stays on her and she just unpacks a suitcase during the whole commercial break. I've never in my life. I mean, I've seen <laughs> it with like sports. I've seen them do like a split screen. Like right. we don't want to go away from the action but i've never seen it with a movie so kudos to up tv and capitalism (laughs) oh now i gotta go back speaking of which you know they're doing a june wedding month but they're calling it june grooms yeah that's right the guys don't get enough play that's what i was like i appreciate that i appreciate that i was like june grooms that's right weddings are always about the women what's with (laughs) (laughs) Um, but 
MTV had all these, like, it was a bunch of just shirtless men, like, in the in their movies. Trevor Donovan, Christopher Vessel, um, what's the homie's name? Don't even remember. And Doesn't so matter. I'm like, I'm like, are we, I know, I know you, you, you live for a shirtless moment here or there. Uh, <laughs> I love that that's my calling card, but yeah, what are we doing here? We're wasting, we, listen, we're wasting um, our time if we don't at least every once in a while. Just give the people what they want. We just want one scene, no shirt, no problems. I can't, I mean, okay, but it's like movie after movie, a sister's armor of the Lord got some dents in it after, so I was just well, like. Well, listen, you got to figure that out on your own. I can't help you there. Well, just, I, you got to. <laughs> If, but listen, if you can't turn to up TV, what can you turn to? So it's I what hear I'm you. saying. I you hear know you. what I'm saying? So I just want to expect my armor to not even be on uh, A, uh, B. You know what I'm saying? Like, it up got TV, but, put, but get your eyes down. Up TV, but eyes down. <laughs> can't lose. Oh, my gosh. So there's this one part. So let's, let's talk about the part where um, Rip begins to find out or they begin to explore like his past where he's in the, what is it? The farmhand house. Is that what it's called? Yeah, sure. Yeah. I, you know, you know what I was surprised by in what this were movie you surprised by? is that he actually was Rip Van Winkle Jr. Like I thought that it was going to end up like not being that like, I, Oh really? Yeah. For some reason I was like, Oh, like it's, there's going to be an explanation that's not time travel, but it wasn't like, he was Rip Van Winkle Jr. and he did time travel. And for some reason in my mind, I was like, no, it's just going to, they're going to figure out a way to explain this away with, with uh, reality. And they didn't. And I appreciated that. Well, you know, now that you say that, and because of how much they talked about PTSD yeah. and veterans, I thought you, I, I do um, agree that I thought it was going to take that turn after some point that, it, and that's where it would have taken the more dramatic turn. Um, but they kept on with the with the time travel. You're right there. Were there any right. moments to you that stuck out that you were just like, this is it right here, hook, line, and sinker? Well, I really did love the 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 physics, the wipe the 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 board scene. Like I that really listen, you we can talk wormhole and full papers <laughs> and poke pencils through it all day long, and it will always work for me. It never doesn't work. I love a good wormhole. I love a good paper illustration. And um, I, you know, we can argue about whether or not clear whiteboards are useful in any other scenario than a camera looking through it. But I love that scene. Like I thought that it was really great. Cause we usually don't get that in depth of an explanation. Right. Whether it, you know, it's a theory on wormhole, whatever. But like we, they did it and I was, I really enjoyed it. If wormholes are your jam and your jelly, did you ever watch Discovery Kids back in the day? There was a show called Strange Days at Blake Holsey High. No, I don't know about this. And it was about a boarding school that apparently was over like a black hole or something. And so all of these, not supernatural, but like scientific, like it would confound the, the bounds of science, but it could still be explained by science in a way. Like it was just really, really cool. And all right. All right, I I'm feel down. like I'm down. <clears throat> yeah, that, that was back in like 2007, circa 2008 ish. Mm -hmm. So, sure. but I'll, it was I'll, I'll it was a jam. It. I can Google things. I you know, Google. if black hole, wormhole, all that is your jam. No so, doubt. what about any, you? What's what? Anything stuck out to you? Um, brr, there's this one part, and it's so like. It was a, it was a t it's so teeny tiny, but they're walking. I think they're, I think they can't, it, this is after they were in the doctor's office, like the hypnotherapist's office, which I didn't know they were going to a hypnotherapist. I thought I was like, oh, we're, you know, that's our second hypnotherapy mention on Hallmark Movies and Mysteries. They're trying, we got, to, they're trying to hypnotherapize <clears throat> you into hypnotherapy. So, that's why I got my armor on though. Like that's no why doubt. I got my helmet of salvation on. You I know what I'm saying? It. I rebuke it. <laughs> but um, she simply she talked about her significant other Simon, 
And he said, oh, is Simon your husband? <clears throat> Excuse me. She was like, no, he's my baby daddy. And I just wasn't expecting her to say yeah, that. That was funny. I didn't see it coming. I was like, oh, we're saying baby daddy. And then sure at, the, at the dance, the old curmudgeon who was, um, <laughs> he was like, well, if it isn't the OG. And I said, first of all, no, he didn't. <laughs> no, you did. Yeah, I couldn't believe it. they did it. That poor got, guy. They made that poor man say OG. <laughs> he didn't know what he, you could, he, like, he didn't know what he was Well, saying. if it isn't the OG. <laughs> if it isn't the OG himself. Well, that gum. I'm just like, we got baby daddy and OG in um, one. The like, old goose. The old, the... <laughs> Whatever it means, I don't know. Oh, gee. Can we talk about the uh, the little smoochy smooch? Dude, get out of my head because I was getting ready to go there. I was getting ready to go there. Hypnotherapy, go, it. it works. <laughs> <laughs> but just, just like, so first of all, it's in the rain. <sighs> yeah, it's in the rain. And I wanted it to be, like, I saw it raining outside. And I was like, this would be a good time for a kiss. How are they going to get outside, though? I think it outside and they got outside and I was like, they did it. They figured it out and it worked and her coming out, boy, she came in, she opened that door, flung that door open, walked down those stairs, bam. And he pulled back, he pulled back and he said, what did he say? I'm a man of, of proper, I'm a man of old fashioned, principles. old fashioned principles. And he threw those principles right back out the window and went in for another one. Oh man. It was everything. It was, it was great. I th probably for me, ki like kiss moment of the year, I think. Oh, for sure. And then the bum comes and sees them. I guess he comes from behind because the way the camera angle is, he's like there, but they don't see him. I don't know, but I'm like, and what did you possibly think was going to happen when you came right now? I wanted to know what his agenda was. Why is he coming at night in the rain? In all black. In all black. Coming up behind, not co not driving up to the house. Like a weirdo. That's, weirdo. This, this is why we sent him to jail. That's, That's right. Exactly defund Jeremy. Hashtag defund Jeremy. <clears throat> What'd you think about the, the dancing scene? Do you um, yeah, at the, at the thing, at the yeah. Uh, whatever. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was good. I love that he, uh, we, we talked about it in our episode, but I love that he said, you got anything older? Uh, and it just meant a slow song. That, that was their definition of older. It's just that it's slow. But yeah, I love a, I love a good dance scene. It worked. It worked. I like that whole whole the whole th uh, sequence mm -hmm. at the thing, like the dad um, and the, the the OG guy and Rip <laughs> coming up and giving the OG guy the business, like, and then the dance. All of that. The yes. sequence that the dance worked for me. Yes, I like that. RVW didn't take no prisoners. Like he he gave them the same energy, same like when bum the bum cop comes into his house after the kiss and is gonna try to tell him like whose territory this is. But Rip said, "Listen, you better get out of here while you still have a future." That's right. That's exactly right. That's a Rip move. That's an OG move if I've ever seen one. That is an OG move. That made me talk back to the screen and say, "You better tell him." <laughs> No doubt. You better tell him what it is. No doubt. So what did you think about how the movie, <clears throat> excuse me, how, what did you think about how the movie ended? Kind of like, not like a bookend per se, but a, maybe like a semi-circle moment of the cave, the storm, she coming in there. Let's be together forever. Yeah, it was a bold move uh, to stay. Um, you know what I, so the, I do feel like it stuck the landing by and large. One thing that Dan, one of the other guys on the show talked about is it would have been great. Like, you know, the, the journal going back in time and the dad reading it was nice, but it would have been great to have one, like somehow have one more um, a, a re, re, Union is the word I'm looking for uh, of the dad of the dad and of the dad and rip rip to rip to um, like somehow the like he goes up to the thing and his dad is there because it's mm. lightning or something and they're able to make amends that way I think would have been nice but the journal you know the fact that journals can travel through time that's good too <laughs> that's good too whatever works for you you know uh, but yeah by and large I I thought I thought the ending worked I think with that it set us up for another one i feel like we could get another one from this we could even get a mini series from this i want to see what life is like for him as he stays in the 21st century 
who else he bucks up against. All the women trying to come for him, and then Sarah's just like, back off, you know? Well, and it does lead to the question of like, are there more of these time traveling bunkers out there? What mm. what is it about this grassy knoll that yes. uh, has that secret sauce? Yes, of, you know it has the whatever it is the 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 juge, the, the, je, quoi. Yeah, the extra 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 good good. Yeah, I, I have to imagine it's not the only place mm. in all of the world. It's not the only place in all of the world. So who else we got walking in there? That's a junior or a second that <laughs> we can would do this you, whole thing again. Would you do? Would you go in there? Would you do it? Go in there if during I, a storm and get electrocuted to another time period. If I knew I could come back, yeah, yeah, heck yeah, yeah. I don't want to go back forever, right? Um, because while we can say all we want about how bad things are, like we've still progressed and we're still moving, you know, and things yeah. like by and large are better now than they ever have been. And so, you know, I don't know if I'd want to go back forever, but I'd love to poke around and see what's out there, you know? Who, would you want to go into the future or go into the past? What would you do? Oh, man. Oh, man, that's a good question. I think I want to go to the future because you're not promised it, you know? Mm. Um, I'd like to see, you know, what type of world my kids are going to inherit, you yeah. know? Yeah. Um, and then maybe I can do something about it. Like I could kind of get some, some, some tools to do things to shape things that might be better for yeah. my children. Yeah. Cause the past is the past. Can't do nothing about that. True. However, I specifically would want to go in the past just so that I can meet C.S. Lewis. Sure. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. And professor Tolkien. This is my nerd showing. I'm Yo, sorry. No. My nerd is showing, but they are my two favorites and quite possibly some of the most creative, like, wells that has graced God's green earth. You and CS can go take a holiday at the sea. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? <laughs> Am I right? Oh my God. <laughs> Am I right? So, Brand. Yes. The man with the master plan in his right hand. Thank you so much. I'm left-handed, by the way, so I don't know what to do with this. I feel like I would be holding it with my left hand, but that's I'm not. I'm not here to correct you. Listen, you're writing in your left, but you're holding. I, the I write plan. it and then I take it. That's right. That's the, yeah, yeah. There you go. But I want to thank you for coming into the home of dear Hallmark and kind of dissect and chop and marinating this movie, ripping time with me. I appreciate you. What a joy. It was uh, so great. Um, you came on our show and crushed it. And I'm so happy that I could come and not crush it, but no. do enough. <laughs> I did enough. I, what I you pa mean? I got by. I got by. I passed. We did it. <laughs> um, is there anything you want to tell the listeners, the viewers, the people out there in podcast land? I'm going to let you have it. Have that last word. Well, I hope that uh, we can see everybody at Rama Drama. Yes. And I hope that everybody keeps listening to Dear Hallmark. <laughs> May you On have repeat. the blessing of a thousand Abrahams. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> uh hopefully not in uh children. Uh but, no. yes. <laughs> but yes. I'm good with my two. My two are fine. Yes. Fine with me. Oh my gosh. Um, are you guys going to Christmas con too? Is that we too are. early? Back. No, no, we'll be there. Um, we're kicking. We'll, we also might be out in the, at the California one as well. Um, oh, bow, 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 bow. depending on how, you know, travel's wild right now. So it might, it is wild and crazy kids trying to figure out what is worth it, you know? So, but of course, we'll see. but definitely, uh, we'll definitely be up in, that uh that booming metropolis of edison yes <laughs> but um, you can you, like if you squint you can see new york city if you squint and then you take the binoculars and then you take the binoculars off and you're like oh we're still here yeah edison new jersey 
And you guys have Bramble Jam Fest coming up too, right? We do. That's happening. Sure, I could talk about that. That's talk happening about it. Um, yeah. August, August 19th and 20th here in Greenville, South Carolina, which if you've never been, it is a little Hallmark town. And so I would um, encourage everybody to come and hang out in our downtown because it's beautiful. Um, Andrew Walker and Nikki Deloach will both be in the house. Um, but it's not a fest. It's not a con. Like you're not going to be waiting in a bunch of lines. We're going to be recording a bunch of podcasts. They're going to be involved in those. You'll get to uh, meet them and take a selfie for free. You're not going to have to pay money, extra money to do things. Once you pay the money to get to the thing, yeah. no shade at the cons. So, oh, it felt um, cold for a minute. I felt yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I yeah, felt yeah. So it. once you get there, you're good, you know? Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. So we hope that people will come out to that. You can go to deckthehomework.com slash fest. There's still some tickies available if you want. Tickies. Tickies. Ticky, ticky, tick, tick, boom. Noted. Well, Bran, thank you so much again for gracing us with your presence. Thank you, pal. You're you're a legend. No, I'm just following in y'all's footsteps. I don't know. You stop it. About. You stop it right now. <laughs> well, guys, he's Bran. I'm Dara, and this is Dear Hallmark. I will talk to you guys in the next episode. <laughs>